everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining us for episode 202 of In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver or gold. This week it's a rapid fire edition of In Focus Friday as we are in the midst of processing that rather large group order that we unboxed last week. If I remember, I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to watch that unboxing video. But some of the coins in that order were just too good to pass up the opportunity to showcase and talk about here on YouTube. So we've got five coins lined up here today, which I think there is something interesting or really pretty to look at. So as we go throughout the video, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on these coins, and I'd love to know which of the five is your favorite and for what reason. So please do remember to hit that like button and comment down below. So without further ado, let's crack on as we've got five coins to talk about here today. The first up that I want to talk about is the Tree of Life coin. It's a really interesting one, this. It's very pretty. I like it a lot. It's got some really great looks and design features. It's got actually a really nice high relief pattern. And I'm not going to take this one out of the bag because it's not mine and I don't want to hold it with bare hands when it's not my coin. But I hope you can see, I hope the camera does it justice, that it's got some really fine detail, some really excellent looks to it. And the tree, the leaves, the radial pattern in the background, the roots, and the Hebrew symbols at the bottom as well, which are just awesome. I love it. It's a really attractive looking coin. I have a few issues with it though, and it's not necessarily about the coin or the design, it's the fact that it's not supplied in the capsule. Now this is a really interesting coin because I think it sits in the happy medium, or I suppose the unhappy medium, between a premium coin and a bullion coin. Its price point indicates that it's halfway in between. It's got a mintage of 50,000, which is very, very low, and you see other coins, and we'll get to it in a moment, like this one here from the Perth Mint, has a mintage of 50,000. It comes supplied in the capsule. And one would argue as well, that perhaps the finish, the design, the quality of the coin on the Perth Mint better than the Nui Mint. Now, Nui Mint is not necessarily world known for its supremely awesome premium coins. This is a good step in that direction though, and it's been continuing to grow in popularity uh, from 2018 and 19. This is now the 2020 edition, so the third year. They're not really changing the design. It's just, of course, the date changing on the other side. I have no issues with these coins other than the fact that I think they deserve a little bit more credit than they're due because they are nice, they are premium. Certainly right now with the way that premiums are relative to bullion coins, I think this represents a really good buy and it was certainly a very popular purchase in the last group order with something like 65 of them being purchased by people. So all things told, I think this one's a pretty good one and a pretty good bet potentially for a coin that might end up yielding a bit of a surprise for people in the future. I don't know if the 2020 edition will set the world on fire. It's probably not going to become, you know, a permanent swan or anything like that, but still pretty good coin. And I have to say, very attractive looking as well. The Tree of Life, of course, which we haven't really talked about the design. The theme of it is all about growth. It's all about learning the branches of knowledge. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I think it's a really cool coin. It's got a nice theme to it. Who doesn't like the good tree of life? Excellent detail. Pretty good coin. Let me know your thoughts on that one down below. Now let's move on to the uh, double Pixu. I'm just going to bring up some information here. Uh, it is a Perth Mint offering. It's another oriental style Perth Mint offering as well. And uh, the Perth Mint has done an awful lot of these type of oriental style coins. We've got the dragon and phoenixes, dragon and tigers and so on. And this is another one that's catering, I think, to that Chinese market. Now, this is one that I, I'm, st I'm still on the fence about it, I have to say. When I saw its, you know, its original release images, was not keen. I did not like the look of it. When I saw some videos of people who, uh, videos of it made by the people here on YouTube, I was like, I'm curious. I think it might be quite good. And then now seeing it in person again, I'm, I'm still on the fence. I'm unconvinced that the design here is as good as coins like the Dragon and Phoenix and that sort of series of coins from the Perth Mint. I'm not going to belittle the quality of it. What I'm looking at is, I just think the aesthetics of it, I'm not entirely sure that these two double uh, dragons, this sort of, you know, it's basically the guardian lions of fortune, happiness, and wealth. And I get that that's what they look like, I get that. But there are, you know, a much more aesthetically pleasing designs out there from the Perth Mint um, about the, you know, about the Chinese kind of connections and stuff. And I, and I just don't think this is the coin for me. It does sit at the kind of higher end of that premium point. And again, I mean, with a mintage of 50,000 supplied in the capsule, it's gonna have some appeal, but will it have as much appeal as the Dragon and Phoenixes, as the Tiger and Phoenixes, and, uh, you know, probably not is my general feeling to it, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's just a personal 
feeling of me that I'm not entirely in love with this coin and this design. There is no doubting though, it is of course sublime in its quality and finish from the Perth Mint. Really, really interesting to see it. It's got this oriental border as well, which is slightly derivative of the oriental border Britannia's, but um, you know, it's an oriental border, it's, you know, it's a well-known pattern, so it's not really derivative. But you know what I mean, like the, it looks like it's the Perth Mint's version of an oriental border, but it's gone way beyond and it's now looking at that kind of Chinese connection. I don't know. I, I'm still on the fence about it. Let me know what you think down below. We have now another Perth Mint offering, which is the Brumby Horse. Now this is not something that I was familiar with at all and I've seen some of the Australian stock horse designs uh, there is by the way a little smudge on the capsule here uh, so you'll have to excuse that that is definitely just the capsule not the horse now that's an important thing because this is quite a premium coin it's sitting at the highest end of all of the kind of standard bullion coins we've got on the table here at approximately $30 uh, 30 euros beg your pardon a coin so probably well probably about $30 as well knowing the exchange rates but it's an expensive piece of silver. Again, with the way the world is right now and premiums on bullion grade silver, I'm not too concerned about the premium of it. I think it's an interesting one. But at the same time, I again, I'm on the fence about it as a coin to buy as an investment. If you, want, if you love horses and you love the history of Brumby horses, which I'm reading about as I was researching for this and in a very kind of short whistle stop tour, essentially James Brumby was a soldier and uh, pastoralist who was transferred uh, from Sydney to Van Diemen's Land in 1801 in Australia and apparently he had some horses with him and the word Brumbies now represents wild horses because most of the horses that he brought with him to the Australian Alps are now descended or all the horses that live today are now descended from those lost Bannon horses that belonged to the early British settlers like Brumby when he came to uh, set up the colonies or to live in these areas. So I think that's pretty cool. It's got a bit of history to it. It's got a little bit of, uh, you know, cool stuff going on in, in terms of that. The stock horses have always been a very popular coin uh, in the Australian, per or sorry, the Perth Mint's repertoire, and they do usually represent pretty good price points. But I don't know enough about this to really say whether or not it will yield huge returns on investment. What I do like though is that the coin is very attractive looking. I do like the finish. I think it's really, really good. The high relief on the different parts of the horse really show off its musculature and the pattern in the water is just fantastic. So all things told, I think it's a pretty cool coin. I wouldn't personally add them to my collection, but that's just because I'm not really in the know about these kind of coins too much. Uh, and I don't know, what, what do you think? Again, let me know your thoughts down in the description below. Next up, let's go for, I'm gonna go for the Oriental Border Britannia. So this one is one of the uh, sort of aftermarket altered Oriental Border Britannias. Now, these kind of coins are not uncommon to be found on the market. Pretty much anybody's within their rights to go and alter a coin, create gilding, create antiquing, rutherium, plating, or whatever they want to do to these things. You know, if you're a business and you do that, that's, you know, you're perfectly within your liberty to do that. It's not a no criminal offence to alter this coin. Now, this is one of the best I've seen. One of the single best attempts at gilding a aftermarket addition to a coin. It's, in my eyes, perfect. I haven't seen any bleeding of the, uh, if the gold gilding of the colouring. I haven't seen any really bad bits that just stick out like a sore thumb. It really does, I think, a really good job. It says what it says on the box, you know, uh, well, it doesn't say it on the box. It says it on their website, on the European Mint's website. This was uh, done by a very skilled third party company, and I have to agree, that is a very good thing. Comes supplied with a little COA as well. Only a hundred of these particular ones were made by this uh, third party. This is number 73. And you can see it's golded in 24, uh, golded, gilded in 24 karat gold and black rutherium. Now, I'm no kind of expert on rutherium. I don't really know it as a metal. I know it's a precious metal. I know it's in the platinum group of metals. I've never really thought about owning rutherium. I don't know whether they're plating the gilding of rutherium and this gold here. I mean, we're talking micro micrograms worth of gold. The amount that you, of gold that is included on these is microscopic. Certainly not enough to jump the price of the coin up to where you would find it, which is of course going to be around the sort of 79 80 euros mark and of course for one ounce of silver that's an awful high price to pay however these coins i think do have the elegance the simplicity well i say simplicity it's a very complex gilding process but the elegance of it which adds to the simplicity of the designs of these coins i think really 
is worth it. And if you are a fan of these, if you like these, if, if for example, you're like me and you love the Oriental Border Britannias, this could be something to crown off your collection. And I do like this. I think this is probably my favorite of the five coins on the table here. It is very close with the, the maple, I will say, but um, it is a kind of coin that I would consider buying as a proper luxury item for myself. It would not necessarily be bought as a you know, full-on investment coin, but I do like it. I think it will hold value. I don't know if it will gain value, but I really do think it's a very, very good one. And that's simply because it's done well. Supplied in this little display box as well, all things told, I like it. I think it's a very cool piece. Last up is another kind of similar themed coin. This one's not Rutherium coated though, it's just gold coated, but it's rose gold. Now this is a really, really pretty one. Now maples, uh, we all love and hate maples, I think. They have mixed receptions to them because of their unfortunate milking instances. And I don't know if this is just a big play on words, the Milky Way version of the Canadian maple leaf. Honestly, that that's you know pretty cool. I, I like to think that's, you know, this is the ultimate milky maple, really is. That said, jokes aside, I think this is actually a really nice, well-produced coin again. There's no massive, well, I can't see any kind of blaring errors on the gilding. It looks really good. The finish of the color stands out. I think it's elegant. I love the rose gold of it. The, the rose gold really does uh, add something different. To put it in sort of comparison, you can really see the difference between the yellow gold and the rose, rose gold. Um, it's, it's down to personal preference. Personally, I absolutely love the color of yellow 24 karat gold, but rose gold is by far and away my kind of second favorite color for gold. I think it's very elegant, very attractive. And the reverse here with the queen on the other side, this is a 2019 maple leaf there. It's just very well done again, and I like that, and it's, it is very cool. So all told, of all of the coins on the table here, I have to go ranking on the order front, we go Number one for the Oriental, number two for the Maple, number three for the Tree of Life, which might surprise some people, number four for the Horse, number five for the Double Pixie. Let me know which you think is the best one. I'd be very intrigued to find out. Uh, of, of course, we didn't talk this one about price point. Again, it's similar price point to the Oriental Border Britannia here. If I had to choose between the two and I had the preference to buy them, I would go for the Oriental Border Britannia every time, but that's just because I really like the design of the Oriental Border Britannias and I like 24 karat yellow gold. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And if you've watched this far, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your time. Also, if you have a moment, please let me know if you're a BYB rambler. It's always fun, it always gives me a giggle. It always makes Mrs. Backyard Bullion laugh as well when I say, look, look, I've got other people saying they're in the BYB rambling society. It is, it's just a small thing that makes us laugh here. And for, you know, good reason, not for bad reasons. So anyway, thank you one and all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, this rapid fire episode. If you want to see any of the unboxing videos from the group orders, there's links down in the description as well. Otherwise, have a fantastic week ahead and thanks for watching. Please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.